Being a metal worker, I really enjoy the mix of metal and wood. I've needed a coffee table for a while, so I decided to build a live edge coffee table with custom metal legs. Stay tuned so you can see exactly how I did it. I wanted to make a coffee table that would complement the end table I made a number of years ago. Now the end table is a walnut live edge piece on top and then it's got a metal base. Here I wanted to use a wood that was a lot lighter than walnut so I chose ash and then for the metal legs I relied heavily on the previous design of the end table by keeping the copper trim and the copper rivets and then painting the whole leg black and knocking it down with scotch bright to give it that aged antique look.
This particular piece of ash had quite a few voids and some checks in it and whatnot, but I really liked how it looked. So I decided to use some black epoxy on it to begin with. I had a couple different fill areas uh, to handle. It was really easy. I just poured it on and then knocked it down. Now when I was planing the top of this, I went through a couple different planes and ultimately I ended up using a finishing plane that was really just taking off a very light cut. The ash was really uh, digging out and, and splintering really easily. And the grain, I think it, you know, it's just the, the grain was going in so many different directions. There's parts of it that are sort of straight, but a lot of it is just all over the place, especially here in the middle. I did have some tear out areas and I just had to address them later on in the in the build. To attach the metal legs to the top, I use these threaded inserts. Now with these I've had a bit of a love-hate relationship with over the years. If you don't size the hole correctly, you're either going to have too loose of a fit or it's going to be too tight and you could damage the insert or even break it, which I've done both. So with these I spent a lot of time making sure I got the proper size hole. I also started off with a Forstner bit, countersunk it a little bit drilled the hole and then I used the chamfering bit so that the edge would sit nice and flat and actually below my surface just a little bit. Now one of the reasons that I've had problems with these in the past is driving them into the wood. They give you an allen key and the allen key tends to strip out the pocket really easily. So what I did this time around was I actually used a bolt and a nut. I ran the bolt through, it was longer than the insert and then I would stop the nut right at the face of the insert and then I was able to use just a box end wrench or a ratchet and get it to drive down nice and clean and straight. For finishing, I decided to use General Finish's Armor Seal the oil-based variety. Now, the first thing I did was apply a seal coat. I used a, a wax-free shellac, then I used aqua coat grain filler to fill in some of the grain areas. After that, I went on top of it with the armor seal, and I probably put about four coats of armor seal on. Uh, I'm really happy with how it looks. I didn't want something that was super shiny, so I went with satin finish. And then on the uh, live edge, I also didn't want that really, really shiny, so I did knock it down a little bit with 220 and uh, just buffed it out with some wax. I think it looks so pretty good. Cool. 